playing when I was about three years old. My family was musical. My father was a professor of music, a wonderful organist. My mother, a violinist and pianist, a very beautiful violinist. And so I was hearing so much music. My father had a school of music uh, in where when we were living, you see, in the same building. So I heard music all the time. And I suppose I heard so much, I thought, well, I went up to my father's music room and said, look, Daddy, I want to play, would you give me lessons, please? And earlier, I, even earlier than that, I had been playing little tunes, even managing to play little tunes on the piano, you see. So my mother said, yes, this child is talented, you know, a very fond mother, so she must be taught. So my father, I think rather unwillingly agreed to me, but he, uh, he began teaching me. So this went on, and um, as good teachers, they... Um, decided I must take examinations at the Royal Schools of Music, Royal College of Music. So I was entered and passed the first one at four years old, with distinction honours, you know, and went on from that, went on with the Royal uh, College examinations. And it was, in a way, looking back, I suppose, a very glamorous life because it got around the papers a bit, the newspapers, reporters came to the house. I kept on playing, practiced very long hours. I, I, I could do six hours a day, three hours, you know, and then have a bit of lunch. So, all right, this went on, and um, I think when I was about six, my uncle, who was another great musician, and he decided to put, put me on the stage, on the con stage, you see, on the big, uh, well, it was the theatre, really, the York Theatre. And I played the piano and played the violin and a little, little, little dance. Later in my career, I played the organ, which, of course, I'm known as now, you see. But, yes. but this... Uh, and then when I was about... Um, when I was 11 years old, and I was uh, invited to play at um, a city hall, Hull City Hall, actually. And I played a very lovely piece of music, which, of course, is always very dear to me, it was called Liebestraum by Liss.
Um, when I was 13, my parents arranged with the authorities for me to have a year off high school to um, do intensive work with my music. I heard organ music going on a lot in the household. My eldest sister was playing the organ at the church, very good organist and pianist, and my father was an organist, my mother was an organist, pianist, violinist, and I thought again, well, good gracious, I'm missing out somewhere. What are they doing? I'm only playing piano and violin and something else. So I said, look, could I learn to play the organ? So as soon as my feet would reach the pedals, my father gave me organ lessons. And this went on very well. I was very interested in it until he allowed me to deputize for him if he wanted a Sunday off, you see, and to give me experience. Just occasionally, I was lured onto what you call a, a tracker action organ, and those were so heavy to play, so amazing, but you still get through, you know. It, it's, um, it's all experience and so good for you. Church organ is still a great love of mine yeah. because I do the, con the churches throughout the country, church organ recitals, and uh, concert organs, the pipe organs, I love very much. And I've done a lot of guest weeks um, at, in the cinemas, yes, on the different organs.
that goes back to myself about five years old. And one reporter came to listen to me play, and I played to him, and he closed his eyes. This is in a cutting, you know, one of my cuttings I have. And when he opened his eyes, he gazed at this little dot on the piano and thought to himself, well, there's a vision of the future Queen of the Keys. So, of course, it stuck. There were a lot of electronic organs coming into the country, Hammonds, a lot of Hammonds. And I thought it would be nice to have a go on those, you know. This was something new again. So I <clears throat> began taking engagements, which um, took me to places perhaps where there wasn't an organ, so they hired one for me. And I played on these electronic organs. Some were very, very good, but occasionally I got one a bit ropey. And I began to think I would like my own, like to purchase my own electronic organ. So I made inquiries um, through my agent in London and various friends. Um, one day I got a call from Compton's Organ Works uh, in London, who were a very big firm. And... They said that they'd heard of a beautiful organ which was in Southwark Cathedral and they thought it would be just what I wanted. Would I like to get to London? Would I get to go to London and meet them and they'd show it to me, you see. So I went along and I saw it and tried it and it was beautiful. So that's been um, all over the place with me now, you see. It's travelled extensively. It's my number one organ. Actually, now I own four. The BBC rang up, I tell, and uh, had I bought this organ, and would I, would I put it onto a, a show, you see? And they were running 
a very nice show called In Town Tonight, which is a, a thrilling show. It was all about London, you see. Would I appear? So I said, yes, lovely. So they arranged, with, with Compton's help, they got this organ to the BBC studios, and I appeared on this In Town Tonight. <laughs> and what a thrill. Again, I did three of these. Yeah. And uh, the first uh, first time there was, um, I think, Jimmy Durante, and he was uh, quite eccentric, really. Uh, he was given the script. He didn't even look at it. He tore it up and gave it back to them, you know. It was lovely. In my dressing room, you, you're in your dressing room, you hear this thrilling um, Eric Coates in the Knightsbridge March, which is a lovely sound. Uh, my husband rang me after the show, and I said, well, did you like it? He said, it sounds wonderful to me. You're going to buy it? I said, well, I think so. <laughs> anyway, I did. So that's been um, all over the place. And then I, um, I was invited to the uh, British Industrious Fair at Olympia, BIF. And that was a lovely experience. It was fortnight. And I did one show, and it went very well, you know, and I played lots of music. I play from memory. I learn everything carefully from music first. But I do play from memory. And I always remember when the dear old lady came up to me afterwards and she said, Miss Hall, that was absolutely wonderful. Just how many tunes will it play? You know, she thought I was winding it at the side or something. with Queen of the Keys and all this on the side, you know. And the organ, the very large organ was inside this. One enjoyed those very much. And then, of course, we I, I began, about that time, I was doing the Blackpool Tower organ recitals, beautiful organ there. And those were very nice. There was a, an extremely good musical director, Mr. Jepson. And he was so musical. The first time I went, I did this show for him, my first booking, yes. and he said, he came at the end, and he said, well, Frida, that was very good, I want you again in about three weeks, double the fee, 
and um, you're going to be the first organist from now on. So, you know, of course, and it's yours. And you can have about 7,000 in the audience. I think I had a record of nearly 7,000. And so these are lovely audiences. One show, I went off, off, the, off the end of the show, backstage, and a lot of fans were waiting, you see. And I recognized a face, you see, uh, someone I knew, because you go on these shows and you hardly know a soul. It's amazing, really. Strangers. And so I said, hello, Ernest, how wonderful to see you. And so Ernest, um, this, this friend I recognized, he, he, tells, he tells this story now. He says, you know, Frida's come from that audience who's been going mad, uh, 7,000, and she's pleased to see little me. <laughs> so he was very thrilled about that. And one tremendous favorite at Blackpool was... <laughs> Of course, are recorded now. My very first one was um, in a Bennett Hill show. It was a variety, straight variety show. I was very nervous. It went very well. I got a very nice review on that, a very, very special one, really. What I could do for British television, all this business, which was very nice. And then I did a magic organ. I uh, had the idea of working on this organ that I've been talking about that I purchased, uh, having puppets on the show. I got a very good puppeteer, and he worked the puppets on the organ. I devised it and produced it myself, and the BBC liked it very much. There was a very nice producer who produced that called Trevor Hill, and he was very, very nice. And we enjoyed doing that very much indeed. And then I think during television and radio and concerts and church organ recitals, everything going on, um, cabaret. And uh, one of, an en entertainment manager heard me play somewhere and said, look, would I bring a Frieda Hall show to this resort? And the Frieda Hall show was launched. I enjoyed that very much. And this went around the country quite a lot. We were down at Ilfracombe with the Frieda Hall show. Uh, there was two lovely seasons there. One season was so um, popular that it was booked right into October. It was extended. I booked an act. She had a horse called Goldie, beautifully trained, looked magnificent on the stage. And I rode him in one or two nights in very short. I love, I love riding. That's one of my hobbies, you know. 
in very short little skirt and took him to the old got off and did my act. You know, someone took the horse away. So they loved that. Anything different. We had a very uh, successful show. Passing by, 
Well, I used this on a lot of radio shows. Uh, for the BBC Theatre Organ particularly, we were booked then to do um, these half-hour recitals from London, and they were very important things. You, you had to keep a very high standard. And there were half-hour live recitals. Stayed in a hotel in London, then you went out to um, Jubilee Studio, which was in the, in the east end of London. It was a huge organ, so, so many manuals, you know, a very large organ. And, of course, you had to sort of memorise it all over again each time you went. So it was hard going rehearsal. Anyway, we, we did theirs, and they seemed to go very, very well. They were very interesting, and you had to work very hard. First of all, you, you didn't speak. The voice came from the other side of London. When you got a light on the organ, you had to be quiet. Somebody else was announcing you from the other side of London. You, were, you thought, well, what if he doesn't speak across there? Well, you never heard a word, you see. But um, it all seemed to go smoothly, and I got some nice letters from the BBC about them. And then they gave me a, a little series called Personal Touch, where I could speak, do my own. And that was lovely. And I did um, one or two. I did one called Around the World, which took music all around the world. And this seemed to be very popular. So this became, you know, just a little series. It's quite interesting. And I enjoyed those very much. So I think that was where I used Passing By. to another programme of Late Light Listening, played for you this evening by Frida Hall on the BBC Theatre Organ. might have guessed from the music that last tune was the bumblebee samba. From now until 20 minutes to 7, we invite you to listen to Frida Hall at the organ of the Odeon Theatre in Newcastle. That's her signature tune she's playing now, Passing By, which I expect you all know.
there's one young man in the audience here today who apparently has come all the way from Australia to um, to, to listen to, to you and your music. Hello. Um, yes, apparently so. I must say hello to him. Yeah, indeed, yeah. yes. What would you say, would you encourage young, youngsters in the modern uh, organ world to, to pursue that type of I career? Would. would you really? Yes, I would. Um, I would because if they can have a work, I would... I would advise them to try to learn music, mm. to really um, study music, yes. because if they get a wide enough field, then they can do so many things. They can play. But just to have a keyboard and do it by little signs and things, I don't think is enough. No. There's a stop to that. There comes a time when they're a bit stuck. And if they, have a, if they will work a bit, nothing comes without work, does it? We all know that. Absolutely. I used indeed, to do about yes, six yes, or seven hours course. a day when I was a child, you see, at the piano. And I had to, to, to make great success of it. So I would say yes, by all means. Preferably a real instrument, an organ, rather than a keyboard. Because keyboard, it's like a lot of organs now. They press the buttons and an arpeggio comes. But people say to me, we love to see your left hand working. You know, if, um, if you're doing the thing, this, is, this has always been my thought that I would like to do the work on an instrument. I don't want to do it for me, you see. Do you know, Frida, somehow or another, I, I rather think that we've only dipped our toe in the water here, so far as the life and career of yes. Frida Hall is concerned. We could talk for hours, couldn't we? But you, sure. you have all these enthusiasts and fans that you, you have to go and see and speak to, and it's been a real delight, it really has, to, to meet a lovely lady, somebody uh, we've been wanting to speak to for an awful long time. That's very uh, f- let, let me ask you one final question. I, I'm never, ever going to be asking a lady's age. I would never dream of that but <laughs> let's nice just man. let let me just say that i would think that you've had plenty of musical experience more than most to set down your life and times in a book have you ever considered that frida well i have i've been asked so often to do this and it's just time and having a little push in the right direction so i will do it because i feel i ought to so many lovely some funny stories when you're abroad and um doing concerts and so on. you get a lot of little real inc- real life incidents and I, I enjoy the life so much that it gets hold of you and it won't leave you alone you just have to go on you know there you are Keep up the good work, Frida. That, those, oh, that's yeah. my advice from somebody who's least qualified to offer advice to, such a, nice. to such a charming lady. But thank you very much for joining me on the thank programme. Thank you very much, Ian. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. 
next 30 minutes, we have a lady at the helm, or rather at the console, for Frida Hall is playing the BBC theatre organ.
says it's time now to say good night. So on behalf of Frida Hall at the BBC Theatre Organ, good night, everybody.